The third part of the method section for a literature review could include a data analysis. And this is how you've looked at each of the articles and summarized them. So let me give you an example. It says here, each study in this paper was analyzed based on the following elements. Year of study, number of video podcasts used, length of video podcasts, type of video podcast used, sample population, sample size, sample description, subject area, reliability and validity, of data collection tools, study area of focus, and the impact of the video podcasts, focusing specifically on attitude, behaviors, and learning performance. Now, here's a, a coding scheme that I've used to code each of the articles. So we go to Appendix A, and here is Appendix A, coding of research papers reviewed examining video podcasts. So here's year of study, number of video podcasts, length and type. Uh, and then there's a description here and the scoring criteria. So I've given the score and it's not particularly well aligned in this table. I would actually have lines for each of these if I were creating it in a, a project format. Uh, the population and then how I've, I've coded it, the sample size reliability, qualitative method, type of study. And those are all the ways I've coded the articles. And those articles appear or are summarized in this table here in Appendix B. So here you are, the, the, uh, the author, and then the number, the focus, VP type. So there's a matching between these labels here and what was produced in Appendix B. So it's how you looked at the articles. Now, you might also add a few themes if those came up. So you might add theme as a label. It just depends. But eventually, you'll come up with a scoring scheme for each of the articles early on. And then you want to go back to your summary table in Excel and make sure that you've coded each article. All right. Now, the other thing you should put in this paper is whether or not you did a meta-analysis. Now, most of you are not going to do a meta-analysis, and here's some reasons why you wouldn't do that. Now, a meta-analysis is looking at the effects of each study, assuming that all the studies are quantitative and that they have before and after uh, structure, so that you can look at the size of effect, the effect size. And a lot of articles don't have that, which makes it almost impossible to do a meta-analysis in education. So I've given the reasons here. The focus of studies, method of data analysis, subject area, and type of podcast vary considerably. There's too many of these different areas to do a proper meta-analysis. Quantitative measurement of impact was assessed in only half the studies here. So you can't then, then you'd have dis to disregard the other half of the studies, which are qualitative, and you should never do that. Qualitative data is very important. And so if they didn't use qualitative approach, then you can't really use a meta-analysis. Meta and then reliability of the tools were rarely reported. And if that's the case, then it doesn't make sense to do a meta-analysis because the quality of data collection doesn't justify the numbers being produced. And then I said, the overall lack of assessment precision will make a meta-analysis essentially meaningless. Okay, so you should have something like that in there uh, just to justify why you didn't do that and why you're doing more of a thematic analysis.